Our plan today is to end this topic this day. And so, and we have to speak very fast, but please follow me because I would like to conclude it so that we can do something that is related to it come following Sunday. It will not be done and keep us on to them and rather than us try to remove us from here. So bear with me, and I'm just happy that uh, we are all gathered here today. But before we go into today's topic, I want to quickly draw attention to something that I think I probably overlooks uh, in what we were considering last week when God came to the Garden of Eden and talked to Adam and Eve. So please look into your Bibles. If you want to read Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Genesis 3, verse 17. I read, and unto Adam, he, meaning God, said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou in that verse, all I want to talk about is one word there. And that word, or uh, two words, that has taken it. That word, taken. That's all I just want to point out. Taken. I want to point it out because this is a question that keeps rising in people's minds when they talk about what happened to God. You know, it's one topic that people find very difficult to accept <laughs> because nobody wants to believe that a mother, if could be ravished by an animal, it hurts. And so we try very much to say <laughs> that cannot be what happened. Unfortunately, that's what it was. We just have to accept it and let's move on from there. But you know, people, ask me, they say, okay, you think the serpent convinced Eve? I say, yes. So she fell, I say, yes. And there was copulations. So how did Adam come to it? So it means Adam traveled or was not at home or whatever. How did it come about? It's so difficult to know how it came about because the Bible does not tell us there was a house or a roof over it in the Garden of Eden. Obviously, there must have been such a provision we don't know in what form. So, and I'm sure from what we have said before, it should be clear to you that the serpent must have been something like a house help to Adam and Eve. And so he was particularly close to them among every other creature on earth. So he took advantage of that and took advantage of Eve. So, the Adam coming while they were in the act and then caught them, the Bible does not say so. When you look at where we just read this morning, God said, because thou, Adam, has hearkened. When we go to the same book of Genesis, where Potiphar's wife, was trying to convince uh, Joseph to sleep with her, that same word was used. In Genesis 39, I think 39 verse 10 or somewhere like that. Let me see if I can get that. But I think it's Genesis 39 verse 10. If it is not, the Bible will make it very clear, very soon. 
But I know that it was in verse, yeah, okay, it's verse 10. And it says, And it came to pass, as she, meaning the wife of Potiphar, spoke to Joseph day by day, day by day, that he, Joseph, hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her, to sleep with her. Day by day, the woman was trying to convince uh, Joseph to sleep with her. But Joseph had not. Go back to where we read this morning in the Garden of Eden concerning Adam. God said, because you did things not. It should be clear to us, Adam being the son of God, because he was, the Bible, I didn't say so, the Bible says so, you have to go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verse 38, you will see very clearly that the Bible calls Adam the Son of God. So, he must have got the revelation that the wife had messed up. So he had a choice. The master right that moment and disowned her. Or accept her. There was no question of Adam did not know. The Father God said, God thou hearkened. It means knowledge. Because what was he hearkening to? It's about what had happened. So Adam knew what happened. So Eve was busy trying to convince him that what she did was fine. And so trying to say to him, let's do it. Now I know what it's like. Let me show you how it is. God said, help me. It means Adam did not just come say, eh, come on, okay, let's go through with it. No. Adam must have exhibited some resistance which made Eve to be talking to him, talking to him, talking to him, trying to convince him. And finally, Adam gave him. That's why God said, because you know I do it. If that was all that time she was trying to convince you, if you have said to her, no. no. Why did Adam back him? I can't tell you. But as long as a human being, I probably say, as a human being who is also married, I can only say, you did this for love. And he needed a companion. So if he denies this one, it to have meant no more companion. Would God replace her? Or just what? So he preferred to take the note rather than go to the unknown. And said, uh, I rather stick with this one. <laughs> I think all of us say the devil will know. He's better than the saint that we don't know. So maybe that's what happened. I would have But definitely, this thing was not simultaneous. Eve finished with serpent and Adam jumped onto her. No, 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 it never happened that way. There was some discussion. How long it took, the Bible does not see. It might have been one day, it might have been two days, whatever. But when we come to discuss at the passage we are going to consider today, we shall have an idea how long it might have taken. But I just want to bear in mind that that's exactly what happened. So, and Adam finally gave it. In any case, let us remember, put something on the back of our minds in all of these matters, that God is the creator, and he had a reason for creating. And let us always remember, as Elohim dwelling in eternity, there was no heaven, there was no earth, there was no water, there was no air, there was no atom, there was nothing, nothing, nothing. Just himself alone. You don't know what it was like, wherever he was, because it was not heaven, because there was no heaven. Heaven was created. So, 
we know one thing for sure from what we have studied so far that he had something in his great mind. Remember, creation is the manifestation of the thoughts of God. Let us remember that. Creation is the manifestation of the thoughts of God, of Elohim, if you prefer. This is absolute truth. This Elohim who was only known, he had some thoughts in his mind, and he developed those thoughts in his mind, and when he was through with those thoughts, he spoke them out. And all of us see creation did this. So all the God creation, even this our earth, everything, whatever by whatever they may call it, just know that it's just a manifestation of the thoughts of anything. Who to do with God? God. So uh, uh, one of those thoughts, apart from that he wanted to be a creator, is that he wanted to be a redeemer, a savior. So if you want to be a redeemer, a savior, something has got to be lost. Something has got to go wrong. Otherwise, we'll not be able to redeem anything. We'll not be able to save anything. So when you see what happened in the Garden of Eden, Condemnable as it must be in our hearts. It's not as if we are any better anything. But condemnable as well it is in our hearts. Let us remember, it's all still working out the purpose and plan of God that we had before creation ever began. So I think that is that matter is cleared up. And therefore, let us take to this uh, scripture. And then we start. God continue to bless us as children in Jesus' name. So please turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. We want to read verses 1 and 2 and then verse 25. Genesis 4. Verses 1 and 2, and then verse 25. Genesis 4, 1 and 2, and then verse 25. Are we there? Okay, let us read. Genesis 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived, and bar came. And said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Verse 2. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Verse 25 now. And Adam knew his wife again the second time. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said, She had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom came sweet. Father, we thank you for your word. May your spirit who give us this word by the bread of Moses, by that spirit, teach us this word today that your children be not in darkness anymore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. However, brethren, before we go into that scripture we read today, permit me to go back a little bit on uh, what we did last Sunday. Because it is, I consider it very important that we always bear this point in mind. We saw last Sunday that the guilty pair, meaning our father Abraham, our father Adam, and our mother Eve, we saw how when they sinned, their eyes became open. They now saw that they were naked. And as I explained to you before, 
Remember earlier on at their creation, the Bible recorded that they were naked and they were not ashamed. But after the act, post the temptation of a serpent, and they now did what they did, both of them, the Bible says, they knew they were naked and they were ashamed. And because of that, they now took fig leaves and they covered their nakedness. That is what the Bible says, they covered their nakedness. We have gone to all of that before to explain why that it was in a case of their consciousness being aroused, self-consciousness, which comes from the soul, took over and they could not see very clearly that they have messed up. People ask, Adam sinned, uh, Eve sinned. Therefore, we can conclude that they are in hell today. I smiled and I said, no, they are not in hell, they are in heaven. I said, but why they sinned? Somebody said, they committed adultery. I said, they did not. So what do you mean? But this, this, this guy Adam did this. I said, Adam was the husband of Eve. A man sleeping with his wife does not commit adultery. So you can't blame, put that charge on Adam. Ah, then what, what did he do wrong? Why was he punished? I said, what he did, he did it out of turn. When God created the animals, he said there should be reproduction. The earth that was damaged as per Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, everything was dead, everything was destroyed, had to be replenished, and God set a law into his animal creatures, including mankind, Remember in your biology class, in your nature study class, man is put in the family of animals at the head of it. God put a law that the female species of animal would not allow any male to come into her unless for the purpose of reproduction. And that's why, till today, the animals, they all, the female ones, become pregnant only at a particular time. At the time that uh, animal science calls the heat. When the heat is on in their lives, once the male comes in, that one uh, copulation Bam, the female becomes pregnant. And the female will never allow the male to come near her again about getting into her, never, until another season when that heat will come in. It is only in man, man by which I mean human beings, that that law is not operating today. And it's not operating because of what Adam did. So you want to know what Adam did wrong? This is what he did wrong. He had the right to sleep with his wife, no problem. But you have to obey the rule of God that to be at a particular time. At the time that animals are still baking, 21st century, 6,000 years, that this topic, I hope that thing has been taken off for them. The serpent was a snake. He wasn't. He was an animal standing erect like man, looking very much like man, had man understood the language of man, had memory, had convincing power, just remember that on it. So, Adam, when Eve had committed that she 
she sold the idea to Adam. If knew that she had a private part, Adam knew she had the private part. God infused the law into them how she be used. But Eve did not wait for the time that God told her to use it. She surrendered it to the serpent because the serpent brought ideas to her that, oh, if you do this thing I'm telling you, forget it. Say, God, did God not say? Say, what are you talking about? Did God not say? God said, but remember, God also put desire into you. As I, serpent, I'm talking to you now, Eve. So they did it. So they did it. They did it, and that was it. Eve now had to convince Adam to come along with her in what she had done. Mm -hmm. So she had to convince. She had to convince Adam to come along with her, and Adam agreed. This is the sin of Adam. They agreed to do it not at the time that he saw the sin of God, but his father's with the law of God went to take place. Adam wanted to eat before the time. That is why today mankind is the only one that has sex. Reproduct. It was not so. It's not so. We are in this world. We are So, but that thing we they did, to man, it will look good. The Bible did not say so, but I'm sure they were also crying at that time, weeping. But they were full of remorse. There's no question about that. They were very boastful. Although, like human beings do today, they still try to make excuses. Adam saying, God, now you cause me. If you did not give me this woman now, I would not have sinned. And the woman saying, God, now the serpent, now you deceive me. So you see all these things. But what's known is that they did sin. Now, having said that, God accepted that they were forceful. But God did not accept their own way of showing that they were impossible. That's why I want to bring this matter back to us today, for us to understand it very well. Because many of us call ourselves Christians, and we don't even know why we say we are Christians. God accepted that they were impossible, but they chose their own way to show that they were remorseful. That way that they showed to say that they were remorseful was covering their nakedness with fitness. That was their own way, not God's way. Brethren, that was the day that religion started in human life. That religion, that's when it started. And it shouldn't be. Religion, mankind, choosing for himself the way and manner in which he will serve God. That is what religion is. Christianity is not a religion. Why? Because Christianity is mankind serving God 
the way that God says it should be served and worshipped. None of us has any right to want to bring about our own way of doing things. Not in the Church of Christ. In the Church of Christ, God, He does not need your knowledge. He does not need any input from you. He sets it down. This is something I wanted. Your business is to bow and say, yes, sir, and go ahead and carry it out. But that is not we see to We say, eh, but in our church, this is how we do it. You don't have the church. There's only one church, and that is Christ's own church. This church of which he is the head of it. Now, God had to cover Adam and Eve with coat of skins. If it has to be skin, then it has to be taken from an animal. So which means for God to be able to provide the coats, the covering for Adam and Eve, some animals had to die. Did those animals, were they party to what Adam and Eve did? Answer is no. They were innocent. God is laying down a law. For sin, there must be something. And that something means blood. So when God took those animals and died, He took their bodies, their flesh, and then made it to covering for Adam and Eve, cover them up. Do you think that God now put a factory on the ground there? or dried up those skins of animals? No, he didn't. He covered them, covered them as it was. So what do you, what will you be looking at? Blood. That is to get them back to him, God. So we're talking about salvation now, we're talking about redemption. That it has to be by blood, and it's going to be mercy. If we had a, photo, a camera that day to take the photograph of uh, uh, Adam and uh, Eve with uh, in that they are covered with the covered with the skin, it's not looking nice. You want to know how we saw it in real life? Calvary. Remember Adam and Eve were not Adam was not wearing trousers. He was not wearing a badda. Now was Eve wearing skirt and blouse. Or tying a palm. They were naked. On Calvary Cross, we saw this thing replayed. He was on that cross. Stark naked. Always remember that Jesus Christ had not any piece of cloth upon him when he was crucified. Don't bother yourself about the pictures you see today, all those carvings, statues, where they put some piece of cloth around his face, around his neck. No, 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 there was nothing like that. He was crucified, start naked, start naked. It was part of the disgrace that the Jews and Romans were try to give uh, Jesus. And you could see on that cross, it was just blood. It was a messy picture. Salvation is messy. The way of redemption is messy. You cannot do it right by making it look nice. Never. It will always be by blood. Now, question. Why would it have to be by blood? This is where exactly I'm going to. We need to understand and accept that what happened was sex. And the purpose of sex, as far as God is concerned, is reproduction. And reproduction only means bringing a life out. And God, in the Bible, in the book of Leviticus, chapter 17, somewhere you find it, and medical science as well, they say that the life of the flesh is in the blood. 
That is why in common parlance, we say to people, don't shed blood. Don't shed blood simply means don't kill. It simply means don't take a life. Showing therefore that blood is what is the life. So here, here you have Adam and Eve, they've committed a sin, and God is telling you and me now that that sin they committed has to do with bringing life into the world. But they did it wrongly. Therefore, the bloodline of mankind had been impaired. Something was not right now concerning the bloodline of mankind. And as far as God is concerned, and as far as God is concerned, for that bloodline of mankind to be acceptable to him, that bloodline of mankind has to be made clean. So, I also expect you to say, but how does that concern me? After all, I was not there. This is 20... What? 2020. 2020. This 2021. 2020. 2020. <laughs> you said it's 2020, but I was, I was not there when Adam and Eve did what they did. That was 6,000 years ago. So, why should it concern me? It concerns you. Listen carefully. When God created man in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, and so man, and so God created man, created he, he, singular, he. in the image of God created he, them, them, plural. At that moment, God created everything that is called human being today and tomorrow. Everybody that will pass through the face of this earth and keep repeating was born and was created at that very moment that Adam was created. In other words, that Tata who was born five seconds ago into maternity was created the same time 6,000 years ago as Adam did. So nobody is older than any other person. It is just a manifestation that it looks like somebody is older. So you look at me now, you say, old oh, man, and you are right. But just remember that you calling me old man, you and I were created the very same, the same second. Always remember that. You know? Yesterday was my birthday, and I thank all of you who remembered, and all of you who sent me messages, may God reward you and protect you in Jesus' name. Yeah. I appreciate your messages, and love that I cherish them. Unfortunately, <laughs> I do not have the time to reply to everybody, but just know that wherever you are, that I sincerely appreciate all that you wrote. And those of you who prayed for me, we will soon some more I appreciate you. And God bless you and God bless you. Okay. So, however, know that it's the same thing. So Adam, when he was created, all of us were created that moment. Everybody says, oh, man came into the world with original sin. Why don't you ask yourself, what's original about sin? Why do you accept that you are born in original sin? And you want to disagree with what happened in the Garden of Eden? Don't you see that there's a problem there? You agree you are born in original sin. That's so, all. Why don't you ask yourself? What has my sin got to do with my being born? And how are you going to be born unless there is sex? You'll be Jesus. So you see now that something happened. That something happened with sex. It affected the bloodline of man. So for man to be accepted back to God, which means to go back to how it was at the Garden of Eden, that bloodline must be cleansed. And for that bloodline to be cleansed, because it was blood that was the issue, the blood has to be found to clean it. So I want you to look at creation now. Yes, there is seven. There's earth. Man is on the earth. This thing happened on the earth. 
now that bloodline must be cleansed with blood. Whose blood? The ground has no blood. Air has no blood. Water has no blood. Tree has no blood. Everything you see around you has no blood. It's only the living things that have blood. Those in the sea, those on the land, those who grow about in the air. And of course, man. But whether the animal is in the sea, or on the land, or in the air, all of them are inferior to man. And it is the bloodline of man that was polluted. That of the bird was not polluted. That was the fish. But everything is under mankind, and mankind pollution affected them. So, because mankind has messed up, this blood has to be found. The blood of these animals in the sea, in the air, on the ground, they could not do the job because they were inferior blood. Now, the blood of man could not do the job because that is the blood that's already contaminated. So question, where will this blood be found now that can cleanse all of this? Of everything that is known to man, there's only one thing left, and that is God himself. That's the only thing left. So God will have to devise a plan by which he, God, will make available blood that is not contaminated because his blood is the only one. Angels could not provide the blood because angels don't have blood. So those of you who say that angels, they stick to man. And I will soon tell you how that one they happen. Because nobody, nobody can engage in sex if you don't get blood. Because it's the blood that helps the erection of man to be there. So now forget about this angel process. So, there's only one of that, only God. And that is why we have to have the virgin Gabriel coming to tell virgin Mary about it and she had it. No sex was involved. The Bible in uh, uh, Acts chapter 20 or somewhere like that tells us very clearly that the blood that was shed was the blood of God. I know some of you will say, hey, we don't have to die. No, cannot be. Nobody says blood of God. So let us see if we can. I hope I can find that scripture now in the book of Acts, just so that we can settle this issue, whether is God's blood or not? Yes, okay. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Acts 20, 28. Let's read. Acts 20, 28. So take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God which he, God, had purchased with his own blood. So you see very clearly there. So that blood, God now made it available by coming in flesh that flesh was called Jesus, and then God went inside of that flesh to ensure that that God was good. All of that happened because God decided from the very before the beginning, before the beginning, before the beginning, while he was still in eternity, he decided that he would be a redeemer. I hope this point has been understood very clearly now, so that we see. We know what we are doing when we are talking about God. 
So I just thought I should bring this matter up to you so that uh, because I don't think we were rushing. We were rushing last time and we did not have time to address it. So today let's go back quickly to our subject matter. We read in today in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, that he slept with Eve. And she conceived and bare Cain. Adam knew his wife. Cain came out. And the woman made a remark I have gotten a man from the wife. She made that remark. Eve. Verse 2 said, And she again bare his brother Abel. And then in verse 25, the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bought a son, and called his name Seth. So we can see, there are two knowings. The first knowing produced Cain and Abel, and the second knowing produced uh, Seth. So from two loins came three children. However, you also observe that the Bible did not talk about twins. Because twins, all of us know the meaning of twins now. It means two, <coughs> excuse me, it means two children. Born by a woman out of intercourse with her husband. Now, this woman here is Eve. She had intercourse with her husband twice, and three children were produced, and the Bible did not call them twins. They're not strange. Let me repeat. We just read. Adam knew his wife. She conceived. She gave birth. Gave birth to Cain. And gave birth to her brother. Abel. And then the husband said to her a second time. And she gave birth to Seth. Two children. Out of two sex acts. Yet the Bible never said there was any two there. So this is what we want to resolve because we are still dealing with the issue of the serpent seed. So will the host please put on the screen something about super fecundation. So let, let us let us see something there. There is something called superfecundation. Yes. Uh, you can see it very clearly there. What, what's, what's on the screen? That's superfecundation for you. So, what is it? It is very difficult for most people to accept that Eve was impregnated. At about the same time, by both the serpent and Adam to give birth to Cain and Abel, respectively. Understandable as this difficulty may be, however, the evidence of medical science now cannot be ignored. That medical science, let me read something to you that medical science said concerning something like that. As you can see from the two photographs there. I want to quote something from medical science. It's a quote. 
He says, doctors have known for years that a woman entering pregnancy can still conceive up to 60 days after her last menstrual period. So theoretically, theoretically, twins could be up to 60 days apart. And this phenomenon is called super fecundation, as you see it on the screen. What this already, what this clearly translates into is that a woman can indeed be impregnated by two different men. That a woman can be impregnated by two different men. If shortly after becoming pregnant for the first man, the woman engages in the sexual act with the second man. And so medical science calls it fecundation. The babies that are so born, strictly speaking, cannot really be called twins. So this is medical opinion. There are a few documented, there are indeed a few documented cases. Some of them even reported in newspapers to prove the veracity of the above statement that I just made, I just read to you, that two men can impregnate a woman about the same time, and the woman will give birth to two children belonging to two different men. I want us to try and put this into our hands. So I will understand what happened in the Garden of Eden. Because one Sunday, we shall talk some of these things in, in a way to show us who we all are, all of us. So in, in uh, America in 2000, 2009, there was a case in Texas of a woman there was a case in Texas a woman her name was given as uh, Mia Washington Mia M I A Mia Washington and this her case was supported in the Nigerian newspaper Saturday Vanguard of 10th July 2010. This woman gave birth to, to, to what the report called twins. Both of them boys. One was named Justin and the other one was named Jordan. Justin and Jordan. They said they were twins. But as the babies grew up, their mother, Mia, began to observe some recognizable differences in their facial appearance. You know, when they first born, nobody saw any difference. But as the story goes, their mother started seeing some difference in their facial appearance. Ah, what's it with this now? So she was alarmed. And she decided to take them for a DNA test. When she got, when the DNA test was done, as she got the report, the, test, the test showed that the two children were from different fathers. The woman said, Haba. It cannot be. It cannot be. No, I said, the issue is I'm seeing two children here. One looks like me, the other one I don't know who it looks like. 
¿Qué va a hacer? De Dios. I can't understand it, but they are yours. Eventually, the woman broke down and confessed. She had a partner called James Harrison. And she slept with James Harrison a few days after sleeping with her husband. So when she slept with her husband, that day she became pregnant. A few days later, two days later, she slept with her boyfriend, James Harrison. She became pregnant as well. So she gave back to these two children. One was for, was for her husband, and the other one was for James Harrison. <laughs> hey. So that is what we call Heteropaternal fecundation. That's what medical science calls it. Heteropaternal medical science just forget that we have just call it super fecundation. That is the meaning. So we want to know so how did that happen? Let me read the doctor's opinion to you for me again. Doctors call it heteropaternal super fecundation. Remember, this is medical science now. For those of you who want to argue with the Bible, doctors call it heteropaternal superfecundation. The simply fecundation. And they say it is so rare, it is so rare that a few cases in the world are documented. The conception can happen. When a woman releases multiple eggs during ovulation and has more than one sexual partner within the same period. So, you know, we have eggs. A woman does not have seed, it is more than seed. The woman has eggs. So, during ovulation, If a woman releases multiple eggs during her ovulation, instead of one egg, it's more than one egg she releases, and she has two male partners, it is possible that she will consume a both of them. How? The different sperm cells of the man can fertilize two separate eggs at roughly the same time. Every month, a woman's ovary releases one egg that can be fertilized by one sperm. But in this case, a pair of eggs emerge. Sperm on its own can remain alive and well and viable for up to five days in the, the reproductive tract of the woman. So when a man puts his strength into the woman, that strength can be pain alive for about five days. Thus, a woman can have sex with two different, can have sex with two different men within the case of five days, and the sperm just kind of hangs out there, waiting for the egg to be released. In order for it to happen, the infidelity will have to have to occur within a 24 to 48 hour period. Once the egg is released and gets fertilized, the system shuts down. So although it is technically, although technically it could happen, it will have to happen in two or so days. So one report, medical report, I'm still reading, estimates that worldwide, worldwide, one in 12 
one in 12 worldwide, one in 12, that is about 8%. One in twelve fraternal sex, fraternal sex, we are by paternal. That's a worldwide survey. He says, worldwide, one in twelve children born were actually from two different parents. The eight percent of children born. Call them please, they're actually from two different parents. So you see, we have to be very careful in these matters and not just say what happened to daddy was a lie. So a woman can indeed give birth to two babies in the manner of twins and yet the babies are actually fathered by two different men. So, there are some people, even reluctantly, are willing to reconsider their former negative position on this matter. They still find it difficult to link this with what happened in the Garden of Eden, because they still cannot imagine that the serpent could do that, that is enter into Eve, not to talk about making her pregnant. So let us allow the Bible to settle the matter. As I've already said to you, every Bible question has a Bible answer. So let us consider the scripture we read and read it again. And Adam, Genesis chapter 4, 1 and 2, and verse 25. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and back in and said, I have gotten a man from the blood. And she again by his brother Abel. She again by his brother Abel, but the Bible did not say that Adam knew her again for that one. And that gives the impression that it was a twin birth, but what is not so. In verse 25, since Adam knew his wife again, that is the second time, and she by his son and called his name Seth, for God said she, had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom came, whom came to sleep. Now, isn't it curious, isn't it odd that Eve found it expedient to make a declaration over her delivery of baby Cain <coughs> and baby Seth? but was silent over the behavior. When she gave back to King, she made the declaration, I've gotten a man from the Lord. That was her, <coughs> that was her, uh, that was her declaration at that time. You know? Now, Why was she silent over a bed? That's a woman who was pregnant. She gave birth to one child. I said, hey, thank God, you have given me a child. She gave birth to the second one, but she kept quiet. She didn't say anything. If Adam fathered the three babies, why was it necessary? for Eve to declare on comments as what we have discussed now. Why? On two children, but not on the three. The Bible record, which we just read, said that Adam knew Eve, had sex with Eve twice. And from these two knowings, we had three children. 
you know, so as I said earlier, that will give the impression that there was some twin. That would be great that there was some twin, twin birth somewhere along the line. But the Bible has not said that there were twins. And you can also notice that the sex acts that they had was purely for pleasure. So as I said earlier to you, it was some pleasure. It made no sense of God's law that is purely for reproduction. It was for pleasure because the serpent told Eve is pleasurable and all that. And Eve sold that idea to Adam. Eve did not say to Adam, come and do it so that we will reproduce. No. She sold the idea to Adam of how it was pleasurable doing it with the serpent. So, and Adam went in for sex for pleasure. And that is why today, what do we have? If it is not sex for pleasure, that's the major thing in sex to be sex for pleasure. Even as at this time that people are judged, some people their own church is on the bed, and that bed has got nothing to do with God. It is bed of pleasure, and they don't know that God is going to judge the world. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter to them. You know. But we have to be very careful. God wants this thing to be done only for creation. So in Genesis 4 1, he said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. That was actually a very clever way of Eve acknowledging that Adam was not the father of Cain. It was evil of saying, eh, evil of Nano saying, Adam is not the father. What does it matter? The child came from God. Because no child can be born on this earth without God knowing about it and without God permitting it. It cannot happen. Any child, it does not matter by whatever way he or she comes to this earth, God is aware of it and God allowed it, otherwise it will never have happened. So if instead of just saying, well, this is what I did do, he said, hey, I've got a child from the Lord. Now who is the thing saying the truth? He said, we just come out. Is it? Okay? But in Genesis uh, 4.25, she gave she came again in the same way as she did before. She made the statement, but this time you can see very clearly what she there announces that 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 scripture announces the birth of Seth, following Adam's second knowing, like the first one, which was quiet. You know? Then the baby story, the woman said, Ah, God gave me another one. So, said, actually, the word said means replacement, a substitution. That's what said means a replacement, a substitution in place of another. Again, Eve stepped in again with a clever way. Women are still clever up to now than that. So again, Eve said, very clever. She delivered a second message concerning the paternity of sex. Hear what she said now. If Adam was Cain's father, why would Seth assume firstborn status? <coughs> After a king was older than Seth. 
But you can see from Bible record, Cain was born, Abel was born, Abel was murdered, Seth came in afterwards, and yet was not referred to like the first. So why, when there was Cain, who quite plainly sinned, you see? So why was Seth enjoying firstborn status or position in the place of Abel? See that Cain was still very much alive at the time. Why? So here Eve merely recognizes her son. You know, I've said this like this, is like that, that, but this one, Adam, by you get up. Thereby indicating that Cain did not come about through Adam. Therefore, as far as paternity is concerned, Cain was from somewhere else. That explains why Eve used the word another. <coughs> she said, God has appointed me another seed. Why should it be so? <coughs> so God has appointed me another seed. When you say another, you are thinking about replacement. Because if that child had been Adam's, if Cain had been Adam's child, Eve should not have said another seed, she should have said, God has given me more seed. But she did not say more. She used another seed. And that's why she gave that child that name, which meant substitution or replacement. Okay? All right. It's important that we tell it as it is so that people will have good understanding. When we go to Genesis chapter 5, we will see the genealogy of Adam death. In Genesis chapter 5. You know, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 5, this is the book of the generations, which is something as genealogy or family tree, you know, or posterity. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 5, this is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made he him. In the day there, it's merely said to give us understanding what that day in the creative plan of God regarding all of mankind. You see? So at the point of creation, we see who Adamic man was, so that all mankind came from there. And so we were all in the loins of Adam when God created Adam. Every body that she passed through the face of the earth. That woman who is pregnant today, when she would give back to that child in nine months' time, that child was created 6,000 years ago. And let us always remember that fact. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 3, it says, And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. If Abel had not been murdered, he would also have been described in the same manner as Seth was described. However, it is curious, it must be significant. That with regard to Cain, this Cain who killed uh, Abel, so, no such description about this being in the image of Adam was ever stated. So something is curious there. Why? 
Why? And we know the Bible says it must bring forth after its own kind and likeness. So the same will apply to these children that were created. So if Cain was truly Adam's child, he should also have been described as Seth was described as being the image of Adam. But that did not happen. In the genealogy of Adam, which shall come up on the screen soon, in that genealogy of Adam, we see something there. His lineage, Adam's lineage, you can see it, you can see it there. I'm not going to see it properly. But you can see, you can see it. The lineage of Adam is reckoned from set. It's not reckoned from K. No. It's reckoned from set. It's Adam and then set. Abel is understandably a bit here because he has no posterity. And therefore, there was no need putting him there when we're talking about the. Uh, Sorry, Daddy. Um, some people might say because of the fact that Cain killed Abel, maybe Adam disowned him or probably put him aside. For record purpose, can you please um, validate that? That is not the case because there are some arguments that people say, oh, because he killed his brother, so that's why his name is not in the gene genealogy of Adam. It's very, that's, it's very simple to answer that question. Let us look at a normal Nigerian family. Let us assume that a Nigerian family has 10 children. And one of them happens to be a notorious murderer, kidnapper, rapist, but whatever name you call it, it's in and out of prison. Would that make the father happy? The answer is no. The father could even curse him and say, You, you are not my child. I disown you. But the moment the day the father will die, when they write this history of the father, will anybody go to the name of that child? The answer is no, his name will still be there. Because that is the truth. If the guy had uh, children, his name will be there as he will name them of his children who will not be the grandchildren of that man. So it's got to to do with whether you are good or bad. No, it's not it. You listen to the statement of uh, Eve. She called Seth replacement. She not see, not call him another child has been brought to me. It's a replacement of the one that was killed. So that's what I'm about. We shall come. We shall see an answer to that question as we in the back of the next five or ten minutes. Let's just be a little bit patient, okay? In the book of Jude, in the epistle of Jude. Jude is the epistle before the book of uh, Revelation. Let's look at that book. We want to read verse 14 in that epistle of Jude. And then we will go back to we will now look at the 
at what to put down the screen. So let's look at verse 14 of the epistle of Jude. It's only one chapter. Jude has one chapter. And by the way, the Jude here who wrote this book, he is the is a half brother of Jesus. Jude was the son of Mary by Joseph. Please bear it in mind. He is the full brother of James, the writer of the epistle of James. James was the child that Mary gave birth to after Jesus. In other words, James was the first son of Joseph by Mary. Jude was one of the sons. There were five sons. Um, I think it's five sons and four daughters that Mary gave birth to through Joseph. It is certainly a lie. Total 100% lie that Mary was a virgin after she had given birth to Jesus. It does not make sense. I cannot understand why anybody is stupid holding on to such a stupid lie. Because the Bible in Matthew chapter 1, I can't I don't remember exactly the, the, the verse, but I know it's in Matthew chapter 1. I think 20 something. It's a Matthew chapter 1, verse 25. The Bible says, and Joseph knew not her, knew not Mary, until she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. So Joseph did not know Mary until after she had given birth to Jesus. The word until is very clear. It's not debatable. Oh, I, a girl says, I was a virgin <coughs> until age 20. What does that mean? It means that <coughs> Please give me a glass of water. Still, glass of water. It means that after the birth of Jesus, Joseph knew his wife. Excuse me. It means that after the birth of Jesus, most, uh, Joseph knew his wife. The Bible calls Jesus firstborn son. Firstborn is not the same thing as only born. Firstborn means there could be second, there could be third, there could be fourth, there could be tenth, there could be hundred, whatever. So I don't know why we are getting this, getting ourselves so confused. Mary was Joseph's wife. She left her husband till Joseph died. And Jesus was looking after the mother. And at the cross of Calvary, Jesus handed his mother over to John, the apostle. And Mary lived with John until she died. That's why, because John was the bishop, of Paul's church in Ephesus. Mary was with her, and that's why Mary died in Ephesus. John himself also later died in that same Ephesus, around 1800. Ephesus in the, is in the country which today we call Turkey. Yes, it's a Muslim land, but that's where Mary died, and that's why she was buried. What's the point about this foolish lies? So Jude was the brother of Jesus, half brother, the same mama, but not the same papa, as we say here. Yeah? Okay. I didn't say step brother because the way we call this in here, yeah, we don't understand. Step is not the same. Step brother is not the same as half brother. 
half brother me say, I like a papa be the same, a mama be the same. Step brother be the same, not be so. Just take care. So, Jude, the brother of Jesus, and in this one chapter, epistle, verse 14, this is what he wrote. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of this saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. So there was Enoch, and this guy, Jude, is telling us that Enoch was the seventh from Adam. And Enoch prophesied at that time, seven generations from Adam, Enoch prophesied that the Lord Jesus was to be coming with 10,000 of his saints. What does that mean? Enoch prophesied about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Which second coming has still not happened in this hour is, but Enoch, seven from Adam, prophesied about it. So but what we want to take here is that Jude calls Enoch servant from Adam. Now, please put on the board for us the uh, no, the, the genealogy of Adam. Okay, servant from Adam, that's what Enoch told us. Now let us go to Genesis chapter 5. We want to read from verses 1 to 18. Genesis 5. Remember, this is the Bible now. This is not Time or Newsweek or Concord or Daily Times or whatever. This is the Bible. You see, this Genesis chapter 5, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made him him. Male and female created him there and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. So the name of each and every one of us, every human is actually Adam. Okay. So verse 3 says, Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. We call this name Seth. So remember, this is the genealogy of Adam. This is the family tree of Adam. And it's the Bible that is given this family tree, not man. So after Adam came Seth. So go to verse. Uh, Verse 6, and you see, and Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. So Seth gave back to Enos. Then go to verse 9. And Enos lived 90 years and begat Canaan. You can see that in verse 9. And Canaan lived 70 years and begat Mahalali. That's in verse 12. In verse 12, Canaan lived 70 years and begat Mahalali. Verse 15. And Mahalali lived 60 and 5 years and begat Jared. Verse 15. Mahalali begat Jared. And verse 18, and Jared lived 162 years and begat Enoch. So when you read to me, you can read the whole of this chapter from verse 1 to verse 32. It gives you the entire genealogy of Adam from Adam to Noah. So please put that in back here. Yes. So you count it now. Adam to Enoch in Genesis. 
chapter 5. Adam won, then Seth 2, Enos 3, Canaan 4, Mahalali 5, Jared 6, Enoch 7. The same thing that Jude said. Jude said, Enoch seventh from Adam. Let's take another one. In First Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter one. That's in First First Chronicles chapter one. In the matter of two or three witnesses, truth is established. That is why we are showing this thing so that everybody will try to what we are saying. First Chronicles chapter one. If you go through it from verse one to verse thirteen, you see everything here. But let's just take chapter one only. Chapter one verses one to three. This is to be one to three, not one to thirteen. It is wrong. What is on the what is on the script is not right. We should be first going to chapter one, verses one to three. So let that be changed afterwards. So first Corinthians chapter one, verses one to three, is given the genealogy of Adam again. It starts Adam. Shet, Enosh, Kina, Mahalali, Jared, Hino, Methuselah, Lamech. So if you come from Adam, Adam 1, Shet 2, Enosh 3, Kenan 4, Mahalali 5, Jared 6, Enosh 7. First Chronicles again confirms that Enosh was seven from Adam. We go to the book of Luke, the gospel according to Luke. We look at chapter 3. Chapter 3 of the book of Luke is actually given the genealogy, the genealogy of Jesus. Please keep listening to this on, on that place. Please bring back that genealogy to the screen. Luke chapter 3. We want to look at again the genealogy. Look at verses 37, verses 37 to 38. It says, which was, remember, this one started from David in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, tracing Jesus Christ right back to the Garden of Eden, right back to Adam. Okay, so whereas the other genealogy we saw started with Adam, this one we are starting with David that made of Jesus Christ back to Adam. So that's why he said is in the way it should not. So let's look at it there. Somewhere it says verse 37, which was the son of a two seller, which was the son of Enoch. So for Enoch count now. Enoch was one one. For the son of Jared, that makes it two. For the son of Malali, that makes it three. For the son of Kaina, four. The son of Enoch is five, the son of Seth six, and the son of Seth Adam seven. So you see that Enoch was the seventh from Adam. So if you now add Cain, if you say Cain was the son of Adam, then the whole Bible is a lie. Because that will have meant that Enoch will be the eighth from Adam. And the Bible says it is seven. So it is very, very clear now that K 
case could not have been the son of uh, Adam. Otherwise, the Bible would have told us so. So, we we'll use three, three scriptures to show you that Cain was not the son of Adam. Abel is not counted in the biblical genealogy because the matter is about the matter, the matter then when you, when you chapter 5, it talks about this is the generations of Adam. Cain and uh, Abel have no generation. So he never mentioned that. He had no prosperity of family life. So that's why it's not included there. Now, let us rest, let us rest this matter so nobody will be in argument. Please mute, mute, mute that sound. Whoever is looking that sound, please mute it. The Bible actually writes this controversy. If it's controversy indeed, but it's not really, as we have been showing you. In Genesis chapter 4, the Bible now gives the one place. I just want to mute. In Genesis chapter 4, the Bible now gives the posterity of Cain. The genealogy of Cain. So that everybody will be clear. If he was the son of Adam, why is his own genealogy different from that of Adam? So let us see what the Bible says about that. Genesis chapter 4, verses 17 to 22. Genesis chapter 4, 17 to 22, you will see the genealogy of Cain. So let us go there. Genesis chapter 4, 17 to 22. I read from 17. And Cain, First of all, after what happened in the Garden of Eden, Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, that's verse 16. Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. So he took God off and then just quit. He left the household of uh, Adam and went away in the north. Okay, so verse 17, and Cain knew his wife. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. The same name as the other one, but not the same person. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he, Cain, built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So Cain built a city. 18. And Enoch, the first son of Cain, was and unto Enoch was born Erat. And Erat begat Mehujail. And Mehujail begat Methusail. And Methusail begat Lamech. Verse 19. And Lamech took unto him two wives, the first polygamist in the Bible. Took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada. Don't mistake it for Ada. This one was Ada. The name of the one was Ada. And the name of the other, Zila. And Adaba Jabal, he was the father of such as dwell in tents and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Juba. He was the father of all such as Andrew, the half and the other. 22. And Zilla, that's the other one. She also bar two bar cave. An instructor of every artificer in brass and iron, 
and the sister of Tubati was Mama. So you can see that this genealogy is completely different from that of Adam, which we have given to you earlier. These two genealogies, the Bible deliberately gave them to us just to help us to see that Cain was truly not Adam's son. There is further proof of this, that Cain was not Adam's son. I'm going to race through this one because of time. In 1 John 3, chapter verse 12, you can be writing the scripture down. Right? If the, if the, uh, uh, if the, you can see the, you can see the genealogy of Cain is out of the screen there. You can see it very well. Cain, Enoch, Erat, Jahil, Patusahil, Lamech, and then you can see Lamech, the first polygamist. You can see his two sons, Jabal and Jubal, and it's from one woman and from the other woman, Jubal Cain. And then you see a put in dotted lines, Nama, that one is a girl, it's a female. That's the reason why I did that. The Bible does not talk about female or marriage. I put it there because I'm going to come back to it later in this study. I'll just move by that. Okay? All right. So I want to prove now from other scriptures in the Bible that Cain was not Adam's son. Every claim we make concerning the word of God, we must prove it by the word of God. Otherwise, it's not valid. So, but because of time, I want to finish in the next 15 minutes. So, pardon me if I erase a little bit, okay? So, 1 John 3, verse 12. I'll write the scripture. If the host is able to cut up with me, fine. Otherwise, you write the scripture and listen to what I say. All right? Okay, okay. Further proof is found that Ken is not the, was not the son of uh, uh, Adam in First John three verse twelve. First John three verse twelve says, "Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, that is, who was born of that wicked one, and he slew his brother." That is First John three twelve. Not as Cain, who was of that evil, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. Now the question that arises: Who is the wicked one? Here we refer to who? First John five eighteen. The same First John, this time five eighteen, gives an answer as to who is the wicked one. First John 5, 18 says, we know that whosoever is born of God, <coughs> whosoever is born of God, sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God, keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. This is First John 5, 18. First John chapter 5, verse 18. He says, because we are trying to prove who the wicked one is, who was said to be the father of Cain. So who is the wicked one in the Bible? Answer is given in 1 John 5, 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one tortured him not. Similarly, 1 John 2, 14, First John chapter 2, verse 14, helps us to identify the wicked one. Again, First John 2, 14. First John 2, 14 says, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him. You have known him that is from the beginning, that is Jesus Christ. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, 
and the word of God abided in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. That gives another description of the wicked one. Then further again, in Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, verses 38 to 39, Matthew 13, verses 38 to 39, this is what we have. In Matthew 13, Gospel of Matthew 13, verses 38 to 39, says, the field is the world, that's the parable of the sower. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, that is God's kingdom. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tars are the children of the wicked world. Verse 39, the enemy that sows them, the enemy that sows the tars is the devil. So you can see now. Then from the verses quoted now, these verses that I've just given you, the identity of the wicked one is clear. It is Satan. And I said in first John three chapter, first John chapter three, verse twelve, the Bible described Cain as being of the wicked one, that is of Satan. In today's terminology. Cain might have been described as having Satan's DNA and not Adam's own. For the Bible has never described Adam as the wicked one, never. Even though he fell, but the Bible never described him as the wicked one. Indeed, this is how the Bible describes Adam in Luke chapter 3, verse 38, which we read today. This is how the Bible described Adam. Which was of the who was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So the Bible described Adam as the son of God. So it would have been the wicked one when they were talking about the paternity of uh, Cain, they said it was of the wicked one. That wicked one then did not refer to Adam. Because the Bible says Adam was the son of God. Consequently, Adam, having been so declared by the Bible as the son of God, he could not in any way also be described as the wicked one with whom the descent of Cain is linked, as in 1 John 3 12. So Adam just could not have been Cain's biological father. No. No, no, he could have been king's father. So we should understand, we should understand that there is not for nothing that the Bible in Genesis chapter 3, verse 20 revealed that Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. When the woman was created, Adam called her woman. Because he was taken from him, from the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Because of that, he called her woman. But after the fall in the garden, this same person, whom Adam named woman, Adam changed her name and called her Eve. Said because she was the mother of all living. Yeah, the Bible never called Adam the father of all living. So you have to ask yourself why. You know? He called Eve because she was the mother. He called her Eve because she was the mother of all living. No child was already born. No child was born as at the time that Eve and uh, Adam gave that to my dad. Remember, they just fell. It's now that you and I know that meeting with that animal called serpent that you became pregnant. So we are talking about only a day or two or three or four after the sex act in the garden. That was when Adam called Eve, I called his wife, 
whom he called woman before, that was when he called her Eve. So Adam knew something. He had the recognition that his wife was already pregnant. So this name Eve was not given to Eve after she gave birth, no. She was not even one month old yet in pregnancy when Adam gave her the name Eve, mother of all living. Okay? So we are coming to a close. Please just hang in a few, a few minutes and we should be, we should be through. You know? So by revelation, that's why Adam gave her that name. But remember, nobody called Adam father of all people. So that name was very clear. It's because all living ones passed to be mother wise, motherhood wise, motherhood wise, every family came to me, passed to me. If you know, but not so Adam. So the fact that we have two different genealogies, one for Adam in Genesis chapter 5, and the other one for Cain in Genesis chapter 4, underlines the existence of two, two parallel lines. Two parallel lines in the primordial human race. So when you think about the altercation between God and Cain, you know, when, the, when God confronted Cain, when he took at that conversation between them, you know, regarding the mother of uh, Abel by Cain, when you read that in Genesis chapter 4, verses 9 to 16, go and read that altercation between God and Cain. When you go and do that, it will give you an insight into the reality of the existence of these two lines. This is one line, the creation line, this another line. Both parallel, and all of you know that part, parallel is you, can, you cannot meet. So by virtue of what happened to the Garden of Eden, you now have two parallel lines in humanity. The seed of the serpent, it is devil, because the devil that will do everything inside that poor animal. The seed of the serpent, and then the seed of the woman, which means the name of Jesus Christ, who is God. It's the seed of the woman, because the woman has no seed. So, but Jesus was described as the seed of the but there are two parallel lines, okay? So, and you can see that those lines are there. The attitude of Cain when God was talking to him was terrible. You know, nobody who has respect for God will speak the way that Cain spoke, especially after knowing that he had murdered his brother, you know, his attitude was grump, grumpily irrelevant. Grumpily irrelevant. <coughs> irreverent, rather, right? not irrelevant, irreverent. He was not reverent to, to God at all, as with God. You know, he was defiant. But mendacially defiant, lying and defiant, being defiant, and the same time, not talking to God. That's a verse. Am I my brother's keeper? See, that kind of stupid thing. And she, he was remorseless. He looked at, he looked at nothing. He was, in fact, outrageously remorseless. He didn't, he meant nothing to him. You know? So, that's why Jesus Christ told the Pharisees in John chapter 8, verse 44. He says, You are of your father the devil. And the loss of your father, the Jew, 
He was a murderer from the beginning and are both not in the truth because there is no truth in him. These are the character characteristics of K. So it, it, is, it is just, it's, it's really, really telling this, this kind of thing, this kind of thing. You see the kind of life. In fact, you know, in the Bible, just in the Bible, uh, in the, some history, they said what happened was that the devil appeared to Cain. I said to Cain, oh yeah, take a stone. This of the sacrifice the people. That's also true. In the Quran, in Muslim tradition, you know what they say about the he said, Quran says, or Hadith says, one of the sisters, because that's what you can find by one of the sisters, one of the daughters of Adam and Eve, was so beautiful, and she was in love with But the girl, then she was That's why I killed That is Islam. That is what, that's what they teach. So in the same chapter 4, you will notice that God calls the king. In Genesis chapter 4, verses 11 to 12, God calls Cain. And you can see, in that God's calls to Cain, you can see some characters attributable matters of it in the lives of certain people on earth. That caused that God named Cain. You can just look at it verses. Chapter 4, verses 11 to 12. In chapter 4, verse 11 to 12, God said to King, in verse 10, let's start from 10, or verse 9, and the Lord said unto King, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And God said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Blood has voice. Why? Because it is life from the life. And life has voice. God asked him, What has thou done? The voice of the brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Verse 11. And now, this is the cause. And now, art thou cursed from the earth, which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Verse 12. When thou tillest the ground, we shall not henceforth devote unto thee her strength. And a fugitive. And a vagabond shall thou be on the earth. Then God will be a fugitive and a vagabond. Then you tell me that he will not come in for me. He was a tiller of the ground. He was like his father. His father was suffered. His father, his father was continuing to get for Adam and Eve. Adam was busy dressing the guard and things, but Sapphire, the natural guard, tried to stretch what he wanted to do. When he came back to the sun, he saw the guard in the sea. And 
So, so you get a vulnerable, and you look at some other people who came up in the light of that that parallel line. I told you, you see, there are people like Lamek. That was the second murderer in the history of man. Cain was the first, and he gave birth to a son called Lamek, the first polygamist. And he also was a murderer. In fact, he killed two persons. Cain killed one, he killed two. So you can see that line. And from that same line, you know, you find uh, Ishmael. Ishmael, Genesis chapter 16, verse 12. You can read that to myself at two because I'm trying to close. In Ishmael. Genesis chapter 16, verse 12. Esau, Genesis 27, verse 40. Please read this one at home. You will see how they behave. You will know straight away that they are from that, the, that same blood running inside of them. That's the seed of the serpent. They were all, they were both fugitive their own violent in character, as well as absolutely disobedient both to parents and to God. So that's why you can see that that same character is good on my case, especially concerning marital matters. Papa said, don't go and marry from so and so. They say that my youth they talk so. They went and did the exact opposite. When you read those scriptures, you will see it including Genesis chapter 26, Genesis 26 verses 34 to 25, and Genesis 28 verses 6 to 9. We will see it regarding Esau and Ishmael concerning their life partners. You know, Ishmael, the one that just went and gave the wife from Egypt, contrary to God's word, and you see Esau. So read it, Genesis chapter 26, verses 34 to 35, and Genesis 28, 6 to 9. All right. So you can also see the difference in the char characters of these two lines, these two parallel lines. You can see the difference in these two lines of the Adamic race. Mm -hmm. Upon being accosted and rebuked by God for modern Abraham, Cain's reaction was to defiantly depart from the presence of the Lord and to go and settle in the land of Mount to the east of Eden, where he began to raise the family and to establish what was to become the first civilization in the Adamic race. The first civilization which you see in Genesis chapter 4, verses 17 to 22, a civilization which was rather notable for its materialistic content. It was all about material things, materialistic content, you know, nothing spiritual there, than for its spiritual. It was all material, material, flesh, flesh, flesh. All in contrast with what happened elsewhere in the case of Seth. Seth began to raise a family. And the Bible in, verse, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 26 said, Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. In the time of Seth, Whereas in some of Cain, there are busy building the piles and things like that. For said, he said, then men began to 
called upon God for his love. You could see the spiritual, the spiritual content of life in the set line. You know? Whereas in the case of the other one, it was all material. And these are the two different vital differences between the two lines of community. You can see the thing coming into focus. One has spiritual sensitivity and the other one has nothing other than just the material aspect of life, just sowing to the flesh and nothing else. We start bothering about what the will of God was concerned anything. So you can see the two lines there. This, my gentleman of God, is what this matter is all about. Something happened in the garden, for sex, as a result of the sex, in between pregnant, and just immediately after she slept with Adam, a day or two or three after, she also became pregnant, gave back to King, gave back to Heaven, and then but it was all for pleasure because it was not the time. That God wanted Adam to go to his wife. Then later now, Adam went to the wife purposely, which was to have a child. That has set king. We can see three of those children, but the Bible did not call them kids. So something happened. And from this thing that happened that we had, we can see developed in human affairs two lines. One seeking God, the other one just pandering to the flesh and the flesh. That is the point. Today, that line is still there. It's no longer clear, as you can see next Sunday, it's no longer clear. But you know, that is still the way to differentiate human beings today. Those who are after God, the hunger after things of God, and those who have come the question is, where do you belong? Which line are you in? Those sowing to the flesh, pandering only after the material things of life, or do you belong to those who are seeking God? Those who are always talking about rapture. Today, people go to church. In some churches, in 365 days of the year, 52 weeks in a year, in some churches today, most churches today, in the 52 weeks in a year, they probably mention rapture only three or four or five times. The rest of the period, they're talking about church program, talking about money, prosperity, all this stuff. Some people even don't rapture completely and laugh at you when you talk about rapture. If you are not thinking about rapture, you will not go in rapture. If your mind is not always on God, you are not going to see God. That thing that is uppermost in your mind, that's what you are going to get. Question Which one are you? I ask you, follow the way of the Lord, and it shall be well with you. I thank you, and that's all we end for today. Next Sunday, we will not talk about how this issue of these two lines have affected human beings, taking it onto the days of Noah. So we will not be talking about what happened in the Garden of Eden next Sunday, it will be about the days of Noah. Because Jesus Christ used the days of Noah to say, when the things on the earth become again like the early days of Noah, that's when I'm going to return. And you have to ask yourself, do the things today look like the days of Noah? Then that means something is fixing to happen. May God help us to understand this thing and we will begin to move forward. To see the face of the Lord, that God will bless us with his salvation in the mighty name. Thank you.
So I thank you all. The email is on the screen, our Facebook and YouTube. Please use them to contact us. We want to hear your comments concerning what we are doing. We don't have to praise. Just tell us the truth, where it is from, where we are getting it right. Say it as it is. Children of God are not diplomats. Don't be a diplomat. Just say it as it is. Criticize me. Tell me I'm wrong for that kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the only way we're going to improve. But we want to know how you see what we are doing, you know, so that uh, all of us can improve. And if there are things to do that are not clear to you, please don't keep it back to yourself and say, I hope you will address it. No hope. Bring it up. Even if it's not about topics we have dealt with or we are dealing with, but as long as it's about matter of God, please don't hesitate. Write to our admin, to our host, Use the Facebook, use the YouTube, email, or however. Right, sending these matters. In fact, I think when we are through with all of what we are doing now, we shall dedicate some Sundays, maybe one Sunday one, or one Sunday two months or six weeks to just question and answers only. So please, please just uh, remember to do that because that's the only way where we, we can improve. So next Sunday, the first time to us, Rapture of Sunday's Trial, we are going to deal with the days of Noah. We are going to tie this limit of Adam down to Noah and then down to the floods so that we can see why God had to destroy them. And to ask ourselves, we need to be still to do this thing. So this is where we are going. I thank God for all of you. And please, let's do that kind of weather. Let's hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One more time, I want to thank all of you. We got in touch with me yesterday because we were God bless you. I need your comments. God bless you. has come yesterday. is coming. You are doing this coming. It's a lot that you are going to. Let's bow our heads as we close with the prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. Our Lord and my God, we thank you for today. We thank you for allowing us to be in your presence. We thank you, oh God, for all that you have spoken to us over today. We are grateful and thank you, Papa God. Grant that that which was said today, that your spirit will touch each and every one of us and give us deeper understanding of that which has been said in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we do not want to be lost. We want to go in that great chapter that is coming soon. Help us to make it to God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every, every weight, every sin, every sinful weaknesses still besetting and defeating us. Jehovah God, step in and be to God Almighty. Give us victory over each and every one of them. And the wash us, wash us thoroughly clean by Christ's holy blood. In Jesus' name. Father God Almighty, a, a new week is here. Your children will have to go and strive for what they will eat. You are the great provider. Because you own the universe and all that there is in it, you are Jehovah El Shaddai, the Almighty, all sufficient God, and great bestower, God, Shah, and Masako. You are great. Uh, you are Jehovah Jireh and great provider. Remember your children in this new working week to bless your children, bless the work of our hands, and to drive the enemy out of all that concerns us, all their machinations directly against us. Father, crush them, for no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that sways the judgment against us. Father, we hereby condemn all of them. 
in Jesus Christ. Amen. No evil shall, no evil shall come away. No evil report shall be said concerning us. Let thy peace be pass out of the stand. We are portion. No, we will not lose heaven, God. We seek heaven, help us to find heaven. Be with us, O God. All this fleshly inclinations of our lives, Father, may you remove and replace them with the spirit. We Amen. thank you because we know you have answered. Bless us, Lord. Amen. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Receive, receive the priestly blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. And let his face, the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious Amen. unto you. Amen. Lord, the Lord lift his countenance upon you. Amen. The, Lord, the Lord bless you with blessed peace. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you all. Bless, bless you too, brother. Let us share the grace. The grace of our, the grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Rest in our body. Rest in our power. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Good morning, sir. Hi, everybody. Good morning.